Hi, and welcome to this section of the Calculus 3 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to continue talking about the concepts of vectors and how they are integrated into the topic of Calculus 3. And in this section, we're going to tackle the topic of vector value functions. Okay? So what we're going to do, essentially, is combine the concept of what you know a function is, which you've studied you know, all of your math life, practically, since algebra. And now your newfound ideas about vectors, and we're going to combine the two into what are called vector value functions. Now, up till this point, with the dot product and the cross product and the, um, the basic introduction to the vectors, you've probably been exposed to a lot of this already in your physics courses, at least to some degree. Okay? Now, in this section and then the follow-on sections from here on out, we're probably going to start to get into areas where you probably haven't tackled in uh, your physics classes at all at least most of you guys, okay? So we're gonna start to, to try to do that here. So the way I'm gonna open this section up is, how would you describe, using math, the path of a particle in three-dimensional space? How would you do that, the trajectory of a particle? Let's say I had a, 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 a BB here, or, or a bumblebee, or that's a good example, a bumblebee, and it's flying around zzz, everywhere, okay? It's going everywhere in three-dimensional space. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down, sometimes towards you, away from you, all this stuff. It's painting a trajectory. Okay? Now, we know that we could define a function for that. Okay? We know that I could trace any, you know, any path and I could create a, a fancy mathematical three-dimensional function and represent that. Okay? But it wouldn't really give me much information with regard to, to the temporal aspect or the time aspect. In other words, we know the B starts here and we know he makes his way over there. But if you just create a spatial function, like f of x and y, like a function of two variables or something, uh, giving you the third vector, or the, th the third value, your z value, you could plot a function like that, and it would give you the path, but it would tell you really mathematically that the b started here and ended there. So we need something to do with time to, tell it, to be able to tell us this stuff, okay? So how do we do that? We're going to use vectors, and we're going to use what we call vector-valued functions, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to motivate this by starting out with a picture, which I think is, is always the best way to do that if I can. So here's three-dimensional space. Here's x, here's y, and here is z, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to say that this b starts out right here, okay? He starts right there, okay? How do we define this point mathematically? Okay, obviously it has x comma y comma z. We know this, but we can use x comma y comma z and use it to define the tip of a vector, which is what we've been doing. Okay, so we can use this guy and we can say that okay, it starts at the tip of this vector, and what we're going to do is we're going to call this vector uh, r. Okay, we're going to call that vector r. In general, you're going to find that. Uh, uh, you're going to find that, that vectors that, that have a label of R in general are going to be position vectors. Okay? And so that's what I'm doing here. This vector has a position, uh, a, a vector R, and I'm going to call it R sub 1 because he starts at this point, so that he has R sub 1. Okay? Now let's say sometime later, okay, see this vector, this vector, don't forget, is a three dimensional vector, so to give you a if you have a feeling for where it actually looks in space, it's right there. Now let's say later on down the road, this guy flies around and around and around, and he ends up here. Okay, right there. And let's say that this guy is right in the plane, in the xy plane, let's say. Okay, right in the xy plane. And this b has flown from r1, he's flown over, over, around, and then finally lands down here. Okay? There. Now, how do I describe his final resting place? Well, I can just use another vector because it basically takes 